everyone, I'm Cass. I'm Jeremy. And we want to welcome you back to Say Mojo Homestead. It has been a crazy, crazy past few days. We actually had the opportunity to take a hog butchering class. So that is why our normal weekend video did not post last night. We took this hog butchering class, which did not leave us a ton of time to work in the garden, but we did get a little bit of work done and we were able to kind of fill some of our raised beds and get those a little bit closer to being planted in. Yes, so we're gonna show you a little bit of what we are doing with our raised beds. Um, there's a little trick, which you'll see in a second, that can save you a lot of money and resources. So we will go ahead and show you that and then we'll come right back and talk about our class, which was a ton of fun. So we have this hay that we had, it's actually straw, it's wheat straw, that we used to store our peppers in over the winter. We put the windows on top of them and we use them kind of as a cold frame type of situation to overwinter our pepper plants. We don't need them anymore. The weather's getting warmer. The pepper plants don't need to be protected from the winter. Our frost date has passed. It's supposed to be, our last frost date is supposed to be April 1st, so we should be good. Um, so instead of just letting these go to waste or put them in our compost pile, we are going to go ahead and use them to fill our raised beds. What will happen is they'll compost down and they'll make really good dirt under there, but for right now, they're just acting as a filler. Most of the plants that we're growing, the roots won't go down deep enough to where it matters. This is just a great way to fill these and make some really good dirt. We put cardboard on the bottom, we're putting this on top and we'll put about six to eight inches of good compost on top of the straw. When you're using these smaller beds, you wanna have a higher concentration of nutrients in them because for me, I'm doing square foot gardening in them and most of them. So the plants will be really close together. They need to have more nutrition in the soil so that they can, each individual plant can get what it's need, what it needs. It's not like it's in an in-crown bed where it's really spread out, but because I'm going to be doing a higher concentration of vegetables in each bed, and I'm going to be having probably some, some herbs and some flowers, things like that to do some companion gardening, I really wanna make sure I use a lot of compost so that each plant can get what it, what it needs in order to thrive and produce well. Okay guys, I've got to add this in. If you have not checked out Willowbrook's uh, new pet chicken, you've got to do this. Honestly, I've never seen anything quite this crazy. They walk it with a leash. So while I did want to get a little bit more done this weekend in the garden because we are rapidly approaching like the safe dates to start putting stuff in the ground, um, this weekend, was definitely worth sacrificing more garden work, I think. Oh yeah, it was 100%. a lot of fun. Yes. Uh, so, as most of you may know, we kind of talked about it a little bit here and there. We are wanting to add pigs and start raising them. Yes. Right now, we're thinking we will only do feeder pigs. We won't have anything that would be like a permanent resident pig-wise on the property, just because the breeds that we're looking at now, which we'll get to, uh, would just be too big, I think, for our space. Oh, yeah. Way too big for me to feel comfortable with our kids being around them and stuff. So, yeah. So, we got the privilege to take a hog butchering class, which was a ton of fun. Our friends at Roots and Refuge um, invited us to come along while they learned. And they brought the guys from Han Hewn up in Ohio down, uh, which they did a great job. Like, I really awesome. cannot stress enough no. how yeah. much I appreciated their knowledge for one right total respect for them just on the knowledge end right but appreciated the way they did the class and talked you through it and taught you and hands-on like i feel confident yes now and um and doing it i feel like i know how to do it yeah if we, if we had to yeah and if we were given the opportunity yeah so we did we processed three pigs and by the third pig the teachers totally stepped back 
and we they brought out the pigs or the pig and we just went to work it was an automatic like we knew what we were doing we were comfortable going ahead and getting started yeah. so one thing that i appreciated about them is they they were honest with us and one thing they were honest about is like guys this is not fun if you're just trying to do it by yourself yeah. and so it it is a good idea to just invite some friends over and do it you know almost like kind of just have a big gathering a party make it an event and that just kind of goes along with our heart for community yeah and really building community around what we do and yeah. it just reiterated that whole idea of the importance of community uh for one but just the camaraderie too that yeah. comes along with things like homesteading like just getting back to the very basics of living yeah. you know and what that does for relationship what that does for building community trust and fellowship yeah. so yeah i also think they are just amazing teachers like their model is they show you once you then do it and then you show someone else basically like you are the one that oversees it that third time i think that is just a great model for for teaching anyone and for it to really get cemented into your brain on how to do something yeah well. the other thing that i think was really really just an amazing thing that hand hewn farm brought to the table was that they actually taught us what to do after we process this meat so we learned how to cure our meat we learned how to mix it ratio wise for like the salt curing and all of that stuff we had to actually weigh meat and do the percentages and do the salt and um, they gave us some recipes for curing the meat with um, i just thought that like having the knowledge for how to process the pig was awesome but also what do you do afterwards like you process it you have all this meat do you just put it all in the freezer what do you do with it i didn't know about the different types of fat and that you could re render down the leaf fat and it would be good for baking i would never would have thought that i could use pork fat for baking and now i can look at the hog and kind of know where the leaf fat is you know what i thought was the most helpful was the way that they approached each part of the process yeah and really explained it they didn't just teach you how to like cut out the tenderloin and then you know cut out the ribs and all that stuff but really explained the process of doing that but then also like what the ribs are and if you take this then you may sacrifice this and what are the benefits mm -hmm. of taking this as opposed to just throwing it in for ground pork and stuff like that and talked through explaining how you could use kind of like what Cass was saying like how you could use each part and each cut in different ways so it's just a lot of information really packed into I mean what felt like a quick weekend it really wasn't a, it was a four-day class the best part though was the charcuterie oh gosh hands down the so one thing that hand hewn really does I mean it's yes it's a butchering class but their like specialty is butchering pork for charcuterie yeah. value and yeah. so that's one of the main focuses they talked about in just curing meats. A lot of the charcuterie type meats are just cured meat. So at the end, today, they like put out the biggest charcuterie board I've ever seen. Oh my gosh, it was massive. I, don't even, I couldn't even tell you what my favorite thing was because they were all so good. Like if you forced me to pick a peppercorn based salami, that was like phenomenal. So, so they also had a smaller, a thinner salami that was spicy. And I don't remember the name. But Fuego. Fuego. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> Hello. I'm sorry. We had like 20 different types of meat we were trying. So, um, but that one was so good. That was probably my favorite overall. The other thing that was a little bit addictive is what they called pig butter. It's literally rendered lard that is whipped with garlic and rosemary right. and a red wine vinaigrette. It's very rich. You're not gonna want a lot of it, but you put a little bit on a cracker or a piece of uh, bread. You're gonna want a lot of it. You don't, your <laughs> arteries maybe? I don't know. Like it might not be wise to eat a whole jar of it. <laughs> That's all I'm saying, but it's amazing. And I was not anticipating to like that as much as I did. So the last thing I wanted to mention is what I was referring to at the beginning of the video is we really started to realize the value of each different type of pig breed 
and the one that we were looking at which was either a cooney cooney or american guinea hog just because they're easy to find around here mm -hmm. would definitely not be the right breed for us while they're small and docile and great they take twice as long to grow out and you're getting a whole lot more fat yeah. which if that's what you're wanting great yeah and i'm not gonna go into a ton of detail just actually put up a video if any of you guys that watch us don't keep up with her go check it out um mm -hmm. but we realized that we definitely we want the fat value but we also want the quick growth and the meat value because yeah. we're raising it for meat we're not yeah. raising it for fat we want the benefit of the fat but one fit one normal pig is going to give us that yeah it's going to give us enough lard to get through a couple years with all with your cooking fats and all of that so we don't need more than one regular size pig for that so we're yeah definitely leaning more towards like an old spot or something like that um and i think that that's going to be better suited for us and yeah. what we're wanting it for but it was a lot of fun it was a long weekend um long days but really really fun days mm -hmm. made some new friends yep. so you guys know who you are welcome to our friend circle <laughs> really enjoyed getting to hang out with you guys um, it was a lot of fun but yeah. let's do highs and lows highs and lows because it's the weekend it's the weekend-ish uh, yeah uh, <laughs> you want to go first sure so my high was definitely like obviously the whole experience that we had with hand hewn farm it was and roots and refuge was amazing um but I really appreciated the relationships like we are community based I really enjoyed just getting to know some people better I really enjoyed the guys from hand hewn farm um had a lot of fun with them it was just a really fun weekend um my low would probably be just that we had crazy week crazy evenings when we got back um, from our learning sessions each day it's we have a farm of our own and so it wasn't just like let's go back to the house and relax and enjoy like talking Deep about our day. day yeah it was like the goats need hay and this needs to be done and that needs to be done so it just kind of made for busier evenings Milo would be uh, we got rain this week which was great mm -hmm. uh, but we poured down really hard really fast yeah. which washed out a lot of dirt on a proper on a job that we did at the beginning of the week which I was a little bit afraid of but thought that we had it secure did not uh, but I had to take care of that just not fun it's kind of discouraging when you you know put all the work in and then mother nature comes and yeah. undoes all your work so my high I would say I mean definitely this weekend um, for sure um, my parents took our kids and so that was you know I missed them I always want to make sure they say that yeah but it was nice just having that break and just having uh, one less thing to kind of worry about in the evenings and all of that stuff when we got home and it was just us which was nice to just be able to focus on the class without having yeah. parenting responsibilities oh, yeah, for sure. if that makes sense yeah so so anyway that's all we have for you thanks again for hanging out with us i hope you have a great week and be blessed mm -hmm.